Hey guys, so the summer season is well into its fifth week or so and I wanted to write a piece on it. What you're about to watch are my general thoughts on all the shows that I've seen so far this season. I haven't watched all of them, but the shows that I've seen so far are Gamers, Classroom of the Elite, Nora Princess and Stray Cat, Clean Freak, Aoyama-kun, Convenience Store Boyfriends, Hell Girl for Twilight, and Suda Dude at Children. If any of these shows suit your fancy or you're curious about them in general, then stick around. I'll also provide time codes if you want to just hear what I have to say about one specific show. Without further ado, let's begin. Gamers I like gamers. I originally wanted to write a piece on gamers, but the more I thought about it, I just didn't really feel like I could say much on it. What I love about the story from the couple episodes that I've seen so far is the way it sets up these characters in these roles and immediately pulls them out when you think you figured them out. It reminds me of Mob Cycle 100 where Mob joins the bodybuilding club. In the first scene, we're introduced to the princess idol character Karen who everyone looks up to and in the next episode she's stalking the main boy Amano because he rejected her. The character Uehara and his girlfriend are cool characters too. Anime loves to explore the idea of the high school debut and Uehara was just a guy who did that. Before high school he used to be a nerdy boy who played video games at the arcade all day and he finds that after his debut now he's stuck with a bunch of normies and he thinks that about his girlfriend as well. He thinks that he has her figured out but then he finds out that his girlfriend knows him before his debut. He immediately 180s his thoughts on his girlfriend and actually starts to care about her. Amano can't make up his mind about what he wants to do yet you can tell that he doesn't actually want to play games alone. I suspect that sooner or later he's going to join that club for gamers and I look forward to seeing what happens between him and Karen. Classroom of the Elite I only got to the 8 minute mark on this show before it completely lost me. It's 8 minutes in and I couldn't tell what was going on. At the school ceremony they declared that everyone who goes to the school is 100% guaranteed a job. The main character introduces himself and he literally introduces himself with the most generic set of sentences. That was the only thing that I enjoyed from the show. It, it actually made me chuckle. But the characters seem pretty cartoony. There's a bus scene where someone asks a guy to give up his seat for an elderly lady and he refuses in the most up his own ass way possible. The way he talked reminded me of a vampire and I almost thought that he was based on his speech pattern and the way the music was playing at the time. I wouldn't have been surprised if he actually had fangs. Moreover, the guy refuses to give up his seat and I'm waiting for someone else in the school uniform to give up their seat for the elderly lady and no one volunteered. So what, because you're guaranteed a career after graduation, you get to be an asshole to the elderly? I completely checked out when the homeroom teacher walked in and her tits were just kind of there. It, it just became abundantly clear that it wasn't going to be worth the time. The only thing left for them to announce was that it was going to be a battle school. A lot of the characters speak in monotone making the show just come off as pretentious and flat. Like I said, I watched 8 minutes and I couldn't tell where it was going. In Baka and Tess, another show about an elite high school. We know right off the bat that this show is a comedy about bottom of the barrel losers just based on their zany introductions and the crappy room that they call a homeroom. I'm a little interested in the girl character but not enough to follow her to see what else happens. Update. I actually did go back to finish the rest of the episode and I didn't learn anything about the direction of the show until the end making it feel like the beginning few scenes were just padding. And I think that I made the right comparison to Baka and Tess as it has a similar plot in which class D tries to move up to class A. Although I still don't know if it's something that I want to continue to watch, I'm glad that I did watch more of the show. Nora Princess and Stray Cat Don't you hate when you find art for a show that you like so you watch the series because you want to get to know the characters and it turns out to be eh? Well that's what happened with this show, I really liked the poster for this series so I checked it out and I was left completely underwhelmed. I wanted to see Patricia, but she was just sitting there drinking tea the entire time. The way this episode was constructed felt super stiff and weird, I don't usually notice things like this but it was too blatant not to notice. I don't know if that's just an animation style that I'm not familiar with but it reminded me of something that I would find in a Vita game. The episodes are about 3 minutes long so easily digestible. The show comes off as something that's telling you not to take it seriously so I guess you shouldn't. Clean Freak Aoyama-kun I wanted to love this so much, especially because I was born into a family of clean freaks and I know germaphobes in real life. I wanted to watch this and be like, yeah, I get that. 
I mean, that's annoying, but I get it. But seriously, this just felt like Sakamoto Desuka playing soccer. I like Sakamoto Desuka, but I stopped watching after six episodes because it became repetitive. Yeah, I guess it became repetitive and that kind of storytelling is best in short bursts. Kind of like reading a Garfield comic in the newspaper. For those of you who aren't familiar with Sakamoto, it's generally about a guy who is seriously perfect. And there are people in his life who try to sabotage Sakamoto until he ultimately defeats them in the most badass way possible and then wins them over. I felt that this was the exact same thing with Aoyama-kun. All the girls at school gush over Aoyama, all the guys in his team put up with him because he's actually a badass, and the coach tolerate his cleanliness because they see it as a mental burden on Aoyama. I would really like it if they explored the mental burden that Aoyama has to endure because of his germophobia instead of just rubbing one off on Aoyama at every turn. But in this first episode, it was focused on the team captain not being able to deal with Aoyama and by the end of the episode he loves him because the team they faced off, who also have a hard on for Aoyama, were defeated by Aoyama after he set aside his dirt phobia to finish the game. Don't get me wrong, I found the show entertaining and I think that it's I think that it's generally funny. But it's just that I literally watched this premise last summer with Sakamoto. I couldn't finish Sakamoto. I, I think that there is something to enjoy here. It's just that it's probably for somebody else. Convenience store boyfriends. This one was a weird one for me. I didn't know what to expect when I first threw this on, but I didn't hate it. The characters all felt super, super shoujo. I kind of kept wondering to myself if boys actually act like the main character and his best friend. Actually, the best friend reminded me a lot of the best friend in Tsukigakirei and I enjoyed that. So I would like to see more where that character goes because of his lighthearted personality. I just don't really care for the designs. I don't feel like I'm watching a story about high schoolers. I, I think that the best way to put it, it's kind of like watching that 70s show where the characters are all supposed to be 17, 18 year olds, but you can tell that they're all in their mid 20s. I might just keep watching this show because I do enjoy romance stories and I want to see how the convenience store plays into this story. Hellgirl 4 Twilight I've seen Hellgirl before but I never finished watching it. The premise always fascinated me after someone at school told me about it. On the surface, Hellgirl is very episodic but overall there's a lore to the show that I never got to experience. I just read about it online. Hellgirl 4 Twilight starts off the same way. A general Hellgirl episode is usually about how someone is being bullied or is plagued by a person so they'll go ahead and contact Hellgirl. They make a contract with Hellgirl to take care of their oppressor on the basis that if she drags that person to hell, their soul too belongs to hell when they die. What I like about it is when the oppressor gets what's coming to them, it's usually in this fashion of insanity and bizarre illusionary torment from Hellgirl and her entourage. The first two episodes were one about a girl who's being teased for being fat and the second one was about a set of partners who were in a toxic relationship. I was excited about this because of that batshit insanity sequence but thus far they've been a little bit weak. Oh, and the overarching plotline of this show is about a mysterious figure who shows up and has conversations with Ai. I recommend this because of the sequence of insanity, but I don't know if this is for everyone. Just because the show touches on topics such as bullying and toxic relationships, and a constant threat of negative emotions. I have to imagine that negativity becoming tiresome after a few episodes. Sure Dure Children Finally, Sure Dure Children. Holy crap, I love this first episode so much. This thing has cute written all over it and it's just fun and adorable all around. It's, it's the kind of thing that's right up my alley. The way I would describe this show is as a character assessment for the way people go about expressing their romantic feelings with one another. The first episode is presented with four couples as they discuss love. The first couple is a scenario about an awkward confession where the guy is aware of what's going on and he's just waiting for that girl to come out and say it. The second one is about a lazy class rep who does confess her feelings to the guy that she likes but then starts teasing him after he gets flustered with how casually she asked him out. The third is about a student body president and a rebel girl who he catches smoking. He tells her that he won't turn her in if she kisses him. Finally, the last couple is about a girl who constantly confesses to her senpai who is close to graduating. She joined the club that they're in to spend more time with him and she tries to confess seriously and she starts crying when she thinks that she messed up her serious confession. 
The way this show is written and presented flows so naturally from couple to couple. The characters all feel different enough that you can feel the difference in dynamic between each couple. I like that this show wants to explore how different people react and handle situations about love. It's something that I haven't seen before and so this makes me the most excited about what I've seen thus far this season. The episodes are short around the 12 minute mark so taking a few minutes out of your day for this show every week is not even a question. Once I catch up, I'll be counting the days for each new episode. Seriously, I think that this is one of the best shows this season and I recommend you guys check it out as well. Alright guys, so that's pretty much it. Those are my general ideas on these few shows that I've seen so far. Have you guys watched any of these? Let me know your thoughts on them. Also, because most of the shows that I picked out on my own haven't been that great, let me let me know if there are much better shows out there because I'm sure that they are. I just, I, I didn't pick them. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thanks for watching.